I also uh, want to ask you, when talking about the achievements of Rana Kumba and his invasion of Nagore, you write, this was perhaps one of the rarest cases when a Hindu monarch adopted the same policy as Muslim conquerors or rulers and demolished the latter's place of worship, the mosque, quite like how countless temples had been desecrated. My question is, how do we look uh, back at these deeds? Because even in the present context, many people raise the same question that, you know, reopening these old wounds can yield nothing uh, and wounds can be opened by many, uh, many people following different faiths. Well, uh, that is true. I mean, reopening wounds, uh, would we call, call it that? Or acknowledging the excesses of the past uh, is a, a great way to heal those wounds. Uh, whitewashing them and uh, behaving as if these things never happened at all and in its place create a fanciful, exaggerated history. I think that is very, very detrimental to society. I time and again hold that, you know, the the grand edifice that we think of national unity, social cohesion, uh, you know, amity between communities, all this cannot rest on the shaky uh, foundations of fabricated history. Uh, we need to look our history into the eye, uh, make peace with it, uh, have that truth and reconciliation with our past and move on. These are not revenge stories. These do not call for retribution. These do not always call for, uh, you know, um, we can't undo the wrongs of the past. These have already happened. But at the same time, you acknowledge that these things happened rather than whitewash it and wish them away, which you cannot do. So outside, when you have Holocaust museums, which uh, commemorate, uh, you know, the, the horrors of the Holocaust, nobody is uh, saying, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a symbol of, hatred against anybody. It's just a reminder of what happened in the past and history is also an important tool to ensure that these mistakes of the past are never repeated again. That is also a very important tool uh, or utility of history that we learn from these mistakes and ensure that they don't happen again. So I think that needs to be uh, the healing role of history. Uh, subterfuge and whitewash cannot uh, achieve this and we'll constantly keep having upheavals, these ghosts from the past which will keep coming from under the carpet when we try to push them under. Uh, that is the sad uh, you know, uh, irony of Indian historiography and that's why we face these problems. So while, while I agree that closure is important and revisiting history in its correct context uh, may give closure, but uh, you, when you write about Ahilya Bai Holkar and what she did uh, for the civilizational heritage, including protecting the Shivlinga at Gyanwapi, uh, it, it does bring me to the present question. Because, uh, you know, there is, there is a court case which is uh, now hearing uh, whether or not the Places of Worship Act of 1991 should stay, whether or not, uh, you know, the rightful Shivlinga uh, as, as that structure is now being called, of course, the other side calls it a fountain. Uh, you know, people want to reclaim it and build a temple back. Uh, on the one hand, you are saying that retribution should not be there. But wouldn't this be seen as uh, retribution by those who will lose their place of worship? Uh, that's a very, that's a completely different uh, conversation, Navika. But I do understand that I think in the context of uh, some of these heroes in this book, like, uh, you know, Ahilya Bai Holkar, um, it becomes important that there are certain places which are extremely important civilizationally for this nation. And places like Ayodhya, Mathura, Kashi, uh, these do come under them, uh, under that, uh, you know, definition. Uh, so, uh, you know, even Ahilya Bai, I think, chose the places that she would like to contribute to. She chose the 12 Jyotirlingas, the 7 uh, Puris, the Char Dhams, and ensured that uh, whatever was destroyed by the waves of iconoclasm before her, uh, she re-established temples in those places and thereby culturally and spiritually kind of unified uh, Bharat. So, uh, to that extent, there are... There are 
um, you know, as historian uh, Sitaram Goyal says, there are almost 40,000 temples that got destroyed in the 500 years of, uh, you know, the Delhi Sultanate alone. Uh, it, it's very difficult to start going on a reclamation drive to get all these 40,000 uh, temples back. But there are some places which are extremely important. And as, as I said, civilizational markers like these. And so there, if there are movements, legitimate movements, uh, through peaceful ways, through legal procedures, no one is going and uh, violently taking back anything from anybody. Uh, if through the legal course of action, one gets back and uh, corrects our history, uh, you know, uh, corrects these uh, for, you know, problems of the past, I don't see anything wrong in that. That, that I do not think is part of the larger retribution. If one actually went on a drive saying all those... Uh, shrines which were destroyed of every faith, then we don't know where to end. There'll be lots of uh, commotion and social disharmony. So I think we need to pick and choose what's important. And I think that's been the larger, uh, you know, uh, drive to that we want only these three Kashi, Mathura and Ayodhya already uh, being back. So I think that's, that's where the story should uh, end.